In this box is what some seller on AliExpress called the i15 Pro Max, which doesn't sound anything like iPhone 15 Pro Max, but it costs only about 90 Canadian dollars. So I am really excited to see what this thing looks like. But first, if you want to learn how to program apps for your own scam iPhone to sell on AliExpress, today's video sponsor, Brilliant.org, is the best place to gain the skills to do that. Just to clarify, uh, no one's endorsing that. Don't be naughty, use your brilliant skills for good. Aside from the awesome new creative coding course, you can try any of the thousands of lessons Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days. Just visit the link brilliant.org forward slash David or click the link below and the first 200 of you will get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. It says Android on the back. That's concerning. It's a nice plain box. And on the base, it confirms we've got a 512 gig version of the i15 Pro Max for less than 10% its retail price. That is quite the bargain. Wow, A Apple has really started cheaping out on the packaging on their phones. This is just a, a plastic bag with some barcodes in it. Oh, well, at least they make up for the cheaper packaging with an included screen protector and cover. Ooh, Apple, you spoil us. Oh, and you're getting a charger with it now. I didn't think they did that with the new phones anymore. Not only that, but you also get some dumpster AirPods with it, which I'm sure will sound great. Oh, and it's nice to see the new USB-C cable included with the i15. Good on you, EU, for intervening. Otherwise, this would still be a lightning cable. Oh. Oh, it feels so premium. Oh, look at that purple. It's majestic. Oh, why did they super glue foam around the power button? I mean, I, I guess it's to protect the titanium, but it that really isn't coming off. I, I guess I'm gonna have to use some cleaning liquor to get that off a bit later. But let's not let that minor detail get in the way of our i15 tour. Uh, on the base of the phone, we have no way. Apple brought back the 3.5 millimeter jack on this new i15. I'm assuming the EU had something to do with that as well. It's a bit weird that the USB-C port isn't in the middle of the device, but I guess Apple's still getting used to the dimensions of the port. Oh, that was a pretty good peel. I've been so excited to see the new dynamic island and it has not disappointed. You can tell that there is at least one camera in it. <laughs> It isn't even in the middle of it. That <laughs> Wait a minute, isn't this supposed to be like 6.7 inch? So I just checked, the seller did indeed say it's a 6.7 inch device because, you know, it's a Pro Max. But here is my, I think it's an iPhone 13, not Pro. And they're basically the same size. So that is, that is definitely not a 6.7 inch device. And once the i15 was powered up, <laughs> It actually has a skin on it to make it look like an iPhone. All jokes aside, that is a pretty decent display considering what this phone is. Um, and it's it's still got a, <laughs> a Safari browser in the bottom. I wonder if you get the correct color bubbles with this phone. That would be very interesting. I will test that later because potentially you can use this to just catfish people on Tinder, which will be really cool. Wow, that is some high quality camera action. But while playing around with the camera, aside from some suspiciously wild specs, 108 megapixels, but I couldn't figure out how to switch between the three cameras on the back. And then I had a closer look at them. Yeah, you can tell <laughs> there's just one sensor. If you look closely at the one, you can see the sensor, but there's just nothing under the other two lenses. And the one camera it does have, Apple clearly salvaged from a 90s CCTV camera because the quality's real Blair Witch projecty. Are you having fun? I then tried out the couple of features on the phone's homepage, like face unlock. Wow, that actually worked, that's impressive. And it's underscreen fingerprint sensor, which was initially promising. Cool, that also worked. But then I tried a finger that I hadn't added yet. 
<laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind. It doesn't have a fingerprint sensor in it. <laughs> Not only did my nose work, even my cat's paw worked to unlock the screen, so it's definitely just lying about that functionality. I've spent ages trying to just do stuff on this phone, and it's basically not a usable smartphone. The main reason for this is because it just refuses to log into your Google account. There is a Google Play app on it, but if you click on it, the sign-in button just ignores you until you get bored and go away. I also went onto the browser and tried to download apps through their website, uh, but that still needs you to log into your Google account, and it just flat out refuses to do that. I guess Google just immediately recognizes it as a massive security threat and refuses to engage with it. Like it's someone flinging feces on a bus. But what's the point of having an i15 Pro Max if you can't spend 15 hours a day playing Candy Crush on it? But it does have a web browser, so you can watch YouTube videos, but this is the closest you can get to having them go full screen. Oh, the audio and the video are already wildly out of sync for some reason. Aside from that, it comes with Google Maps pre-installed on it, which also doesn't work. It tells you to update it, you update it, and then it still tells you to update it, and <laughs> it just never works, uh, so you can't use it to navigate. Although on the bright side, it's not all bad. I did drop a SIM card in here and was able to have a terrible quality phone call using the phone. I mean, that would make sense, right? If the microphone is really bad, it would mean that... So you can do that with it, but the text bubbles are green. So you can't use this to pretend to have an iPhone to up your chances on Tinder, which I feel like is the whole point of the phone, so that's a bit disappointing. However, it does technically meet the minimum requirement for it to be considered a cell phone. Maybe not a smartphone, but a cell phone, so that's good. Okay, so we've established that basically nothing works on it. But I was still curious to see what kind of specs we're actually working with in this phone, because, well, the specs it lists are shockingly high-end, and this is not a high-end device. Now, finding out what the real specs were weren't that easy, because I couldn't download a third-party app onto the phone to check, because of, you know, the whole Google account issue. Uh, but I was able to do a whole workaround so that I could plug this into a PC and check its specs through that. And according to that software, the SOC, or processor in here, is a MediaTek MT6582 with Android version 4. 5 on it, which I guess explains the whole Play Store issue. And then we have 12 gigs of storage in it. So it's pretty much a 10 year old budget phone that's had a frontal lobotomy done on it, and then was put in a case that makes it look a bit like an iPhone 15 if it's 200 meters away from you and you're squinting at it. So yes, the $90 i15 Pro Max from AliExpress is basically manufactured garbage. Who would have seen that coming? Which brings me to the end of another very useful video. Thank you for watching, sub to the channel if you liked it, and until the next one, bye-bye.